All right, so we got finished looking at the uh, Folsom prison attack. Now we're going to look at a little bit more sophisticated uh, matter matter of attacking. Uh, again, we're going to look at attacks against an armed assailant. Again, these attacks are uh, easily justified, but someone with a knife is threatening us. This is a very serious situation. We do not wait, need to wait for an attack if we feel threatened and there is the appearance that an attack against us is imminent. Uh, we prefer to bring the fight to the threat so that the threat is in the reactionary phase rather than us. Uh, in this section, we're going to look at a variety of attacks that will allow us to take advantage of the position the threat is in. Uh, in the uh, fighting stance we use in this course, uh, we use the one that we feel has the most strength and the least weaknesses. Since a threat may be in any one of uh, four basic stances, we're going to look at the four different. We're going to look at four different attacks that will address each stance's strengths and weaknesses. Uh, when we attack, we like to take advantage of the weaknesses of a stance while avoiding its strengths. And again, in this section, we're going to look at some of the specific attacks that will allow us to take advantage of the position the threat may be in. Uh, again, the attacks uh, are going to be similar to the zone defense counterattacks, and each attack may be modified to serve, suit uh, you know, your uh, personal strengths. And again, it is important that we account for Murphy uh, by having the threat respond to our attacks in different manners rather than just standing still while being cut up. Uh, this is one of the things that really kind of gets my goat. <clears throat> You'll see a guy uh, teaching a class and he'll uh, show a technique to students and he'll say, okay, uh, you're standing here and you're doing this and then I do this and this and this and this and this. And while he's doing this and this and this and this, the student just stands there and doesn't continue the fight. Well, that's not very realistic. And, you know, one of the things, you know, they talk about is, you know, Murphy, again, you know, who's Murphy? Murphy is, you know, anything that can go wrong will go wrong at exactly the wrong moment. So this is what you have to be aware of uh, during a fight is that, you know, something can go wrong. You know, you have this perfect little technique that you've been in your basement or your garage or your backyard or even at the dojo. And you've trained and you've trained and you've trained. You've done this technique and you've done this technique and you've done this technique. And now all of a sudden you get out there in a situation where a guy is standing in front of you with a knife and you go to launch your technique at this guy and all of a sudden he doesn't respond to you the way the instructor had you respond to him when he taught you the attack. And this guy on the street, he doesn't respond the way your training partner responded to you all the times you practice this attack. And all of a sudden, he's not where he's supposed to be so that you can complete the attack. Or all of a sudden, his knife is coming at you like your buddy's knife never came at you uh, because you were trying to do your technique. And that's the big problem. That's what you really have to be aware of is you have to be able to defend yourself the entire time you're throwing these techniques. I mean, I see guys uh, on the internet. And, I mean, these are some very highly respected instructors and one guy does a uh, mechanical cut to an inner thigh and to get down there to get to the inner thigh he's literally like if, if I'm addressing the threat right here in front of me and I'm going down to stab his inner thigh well I've practically given him my back well as long as all these cuts up here got the effect that they were supposed to and as long as he doesn't have the ability to follow me down here or move his leg as I'm trying to stab him, everything's gonna work out fine. But in my world, things just don't work like that. If they did, I wouldn't be teaching you this stuff. All that kata I had learned earlier, that would be all I needed. But the problem was, was when I took a lot of that kata out onto the streets, it just didn't work that way. It, 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 the fight didn't work that way. The guy didn't stand in front of me. The guy moved, the guy did stuff different. He didn't punch the way they punched in karate class, that type of stuff. You know, uh, who Bud and, uh, and these Wing Chun drills, you know, all that type of stuff, these Chai Sao drills, you know, they work great in the class because you're fighting in a style that they're intended to work against. You know, once you get out there in the real, in the real world, it doesn't always work that way. So you have to Murphy everything you do. You know, these guys that do all these, uh, this who Bud and these, uh, these flow drills, you know, that we worked on a little bit, and that becomes their ends, you know. Oh, okay, well, you know, if the guy's gonna attack this way, I need this drill. If he's gonna attack this way, I need this drill. No, those are just to help get you 
Those are a, a means to an end. Okay, the guy in the street's not going to fight in that manner, and you can't you can't expect him to or require him to. If you do, your system's going to leave you high and dry at the moment when you need it. So again, we're gonna uh, we're gonna Murphy these drills a little bit and uh, try to do everything we can to make it harder for the attacker to uh, get the job done, and thus we'll have an answer for when something goes wrong, which is usually spinning the center line and getting some distance. So we'll look at some of that stuff and uh, we'll show you these drills. Again, we're going to look at uh, four different uh, attacks. Basically, the guy is going to stand at you with a right lead or a left lead. And if he's in the left lead, he's either going to have the knife in the front hand or he's going to have it in the back hand. And if he's the right lead, again, he's going to have the hand, the knife in the lead hand or in the back hand. And depending on which of those he has, again, reverse grip, uh, forward grip, not a big difference in this instance uh, because of the weaknesses the stance uh, allow. I mean, just, just to give you a quick start, I mean, if I have the knife in my rear hand and I have a hand forward, this right hand forward, well, this area of my body is very exposed. It's going to take the knife a long way to get on anybody who is attacking this area of my body. So, of course, that's a huge weakness over here. That's one of the reasons why we have the knife in the uh, uh, forward hand when, we, uh, when we're in our stance. So anyways, uh, we'll look at these uh, four different things and uh, we'll show you some basic attacks. Again, the attacks are going to uh, pretty much mimic what we already learned. Again, I don't like to teach something new if I already have something uh, in the uh, toolbox that will do the job. So anyways, we'll get to that once uh, Scott. All right, the first attack we're going to look at, again, we're leading with the left leg and we have the knife in our left hand. So the first attack we're gonna look at is when the threat has the opposite side lead. So again, his position is gonna be a mirror image of ours. He's gonna be in a right leg lead, and he's gonna carry the knife in his right hand. So again, we're gonna be like a mirror image to this guy. Again, because the knife is in his lead hand, this position puts us, us both at a similar initial situation. However, since we will be initiating the attack, the threat will be forced into a reactionary position. This and our ability to outmaneuver the threat and to bring both of our hands into the fight against his one hand will give us a big advantage. If the threat holds his knife extended in front of him, our advantage will be even greater because he won't have as much uh, thrusting range. Our disadvantage is that if the threat can adjust by having the ability to move much more quickly than we can, we may uh, be exposing some of our vulnerable targets while moving towards his flank. Again, the key to this attack is the feint which forces the threat to react in a manner that allows us to capitalize on his reaction, whether he holds a knife forward or keeps it near his hip. Again, we're going to take his flank by moving toward our knife hand side. Uh, we're gonna do this by feigning and then slip attacking on angle one at his knife hand. Again, like we saw when we were doing the feint, don't worry if we miss because we have our, uh, because we have our free hand to still check his knife hand or to, do, or to distract him by striking. Also, this opening attack was only a closing attack for the purpose of allowing us to flank the threat and to gain information about how he moves. Uh, from this point, we are going to immediately perform a second step and drag, uh, step through if he is retreating quickly and we need to keep up with him. Uh, this will allow us to completely flank the threat. Again, we're going to attempt to check uh, or strike with our free hand during the second step. Uh, we're gonna be, have to be very careful of a reverse stab if he's using the Chinese, as we try to go by him here, he may try to do a reverse stab again. That's our empty hands job to pick that up. And uh, we're going to immediately thrust for the neck on an angle six. So we're going to be going up to his neck here with a six uh, as we slip attack and step through to take the rear. Once we get behind him, we're going to grab the back of his knife hand shoulder. Again, keep this tight or keep it pushed off, whichever you prefer. Uh, the best way you can control him. And we're going to grab the back of the knife hand shoulder with our free hand, reach around the far side of the threat's neck with the knife to finish by uh, with a reverse angle four. Uh, if we're able to maintain control of his knife shoulder, we can keep stabbing all over a uh, soft part of him, soft parts of him with uh, on his non knife side with angle three thrust. You know, this would basically be a jailhouse shanking uh, type thing. If we can't maintain control of his rear, uh, we should be able to outmaneuver him while delivering slip attacks until he bleeds out. Again, you know, how long are you going to stay here and continue to stab this guy is uh, 
uh, completely up to you and completely dependent on how much control you have of that knife hand shoulder. You've got that in tight, he can't get the knife to you. Your uh, forearm is blocking his upper arm so that the knife can't make its way back towards you. Uh, you can just keep stabbing him uh, until he uh, falls down. Again, you can also uh, use a, uh, a foot and step on the back of his uh, knee joint, uh, kick that knee out and drop him to the ground that way. Or again, you can just push him off as we were doing uh, with a check, a heavy check, and then do a, uh, you know, spin the center line uh, in a way that will cause him to have to turn very far to get back on line to you. And then again, uh, you know, at, at this point, if you've gotten that six in, or if you've got that reverse four in, you know, you've already won the fight. He's gonna bleed out. So we wanna play it smart and limit any exposure to injury uh, as much as possible. Safe place to avoid an attack is to continually circle uh, using a step through movement as though we are defending areas uh, two and four. So again, we're gonna be moving away from his knife and uh, we're gonna be, or you know, we need to be defending on two and four or we're gonna be slashing back and forth on angles three and four just to keep him wary of wading into us. Again, if we have a heavy cut on this guy, uh, he's got bigger problems in continuing to attack us. But again, we never know. You know maybe this guy is a, uh, it was the thug that I talked about. You know, he's, he's gonna go down with a fight. Again, our initial attacks don't have to be successful to be beneficial to us. Though we must complete these closing attacks uh, in a completely defensible uh, position, as I said. Seeing how the threat responds to the attack can help us determine if there's a better, if a better strategy is available. This is one of the reasons why it's important to practice against as many different people and styles as possible. And again, when we go through this, uh, we're going to show, uh, we're going to try to Murphy it up a little bit, and uh, we'll show you uh, uh, how to get out of those situations. Yeah, right before. Knife is going to be in the right hand, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a feint, and with my feint, I'm then going to attack to the side. So again, here's my feint here, here, here's my cut here. I can catch this here. This one goes up here. Up here. Okay. Now put the knife, tuck the knife in tight. Tuck it tight. Again, I'm going like this here. And here. And there. And there. And there. That's basically. Now we'll go a couple foot ones. Okay, so uh, what will happen is you'll come up, you'll point at me, and I'll get my attack. Try to turn towards me. So you're going to uh, point. You're going to do like an angle one, and then come with an angle four. Each 
way it's going, even as I'm pushing you, I'm, I'm turning this way. Yeah. You're uh, stopping. I'm going to really try to track you and just get away from me as I track you. I'm really not going to train troll this too much and have this guy uh, like try to anticipate your attack. But uh, we are going to try to mimic uh, simultaneous attacks. What I'm going to do is when I point my finger at you, I'm coming with a knife. <coughs> so when I point my finger at you, you need to start your defense. Okay? You need your clock. Now that right there is one of the best ways of training troll, a training troll, is you don't do what you're supposed to do. Now if you ever think a guy's training trolling you, and he is sure that he is not training trolling you and he's being a good student, do what Scotty just did. Just go the opposite way. And when you, he gets left high and dry, then you'll be able to say to him, well, see how you got left high and dry that time, and the other times you're not getting left high and dry? Well, what's the difference? You didn't know what I was going to do. That's why you got left at high and dry. Because you couldn't training troll me. Because I didn't do what you were anticipating. That's one of the simplest ways to tell. It was actually quite nice by Sky to do that. Uh, and again, what's he doing there? Well, because he's kind of training trolling me almost. Uh, in that, because he knows that I'm going to attack, yeah. he goes into a defense response instead of an offensive response. But again, uh, that's you know that's the way you trick your training troll, is you know when he keeps anticipating your movement, anticipating your movement, screwing up your little parade, uh, not you know not being in a reactionary phase like he's supposed to be in, put him in a reactionary phase by doing something different to him, and maybe hurt him, <laughs> teach him a little lesson, you know like uh, you're supposed to go this way instead just step this way and like stick your finger in his eye. Just a joke, just a joke. Disclaimer, do not stick your finger in your friend's eye. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's be completely just, you know, disclaimer, don't stick your finger in your eye. That's what Scott wanted me to say. Well, I'll listen to him. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's basically it for that one, right? Yeah, uh, one of, uh, try, let me try one of those. Yeah. So again, when you point your finger, then immediately come with your right hand. Uh, yeah, you're on the right hand. So yeah, as you can see, like the biggest problem, Scotty's attacks, I don't know if you remember from his early videos, when Scott used to attack, they would be like so controlled that they were like timid like this, you know. Now you see him attacking me, boom, he's like gone. That's one of the big problems you'll have when you uh, flank these guys, is because they think they're coming in for a big crash, all of a sudden you're not there, it's like, boom, they're gone before you even have a chance. But again, most guys don't have really effective uh, slip attacks, so they don't really have that quick momentum going forward uh, like we have. And again, you know, this stuff looks kind of slow when you look at it on a video, but uh, it's hard to get your body moving in a direction quickly and smoothly. Uh, and, uh, you know, unless you're really sitting here having the guy move at you, you don't realize how quick he's coming at you. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's pretty much it. And we're going to go on to that uh, second one now. All right, so we got finished looking at the uh, Folsom prison attack. Now we're going to look at a little bit more sophisticated uh, matter, matter of attacking. 
Uh, again, we're going to look at a tax against an armed assailant. Again, these tax are uh, easily justified. When someone with a knife is threatening us, this is a very serious situation. We do not wait, need to wait for an attack if we feel threatened and there is the appearance that an attack against us is imminent. Uh, we prefer to bring the fight to the threat so that the threat is in the reactionary phase rather than us. Uh, in this section, we're going to look at a variety of attacks that will allow us to take advantage of the position the threat is in. Suit, uh, you know, your uh, personal strengths. And again, it is important that we account for Murphy uh, by having the threat respond to our attacks in different manners rather than just standing still while being cut up. Uh, this is one of the things that really kind of gets my goat. <clears throat> You'll see a guy uh, teaching a class and he'll uh, show a technique to students. And he'll say, okay, uh, you're standing here and you're doing this. And then I do this and this and this and this and this. And while he's doing this and this and this and this, the student just stands there and doesn't continue the fight. Well, that's not very realistic. And, you know, one of the things, you know, they talk about is, you know, Murphy, again, you know, who's Murphy? Murphy is, you know, anything that can go wrong will go wrong at exactly the wrong moment. So this is what you have to be aware of uh, during a fight is that, you know, something can go wrong. You know, you have this perfect little technique that you've been in your basement or your garage or your backyard or even at the dojo and you've trained and you've trained and you've trained. You've done this technique and you've done this technique and you've done this technique. And now all of a sudden you get out there in a situation where a guy is standing in front of you with a knife and you go to launch your technique at this guy and all of a sudden he doesn't respond to you the way the instructor had you respond to him when he taught you the attack. And this guy on the street, he doesn't respond the way your training partner responded to you all the times you practice this attack. And all of a sudden, he's not where he's supposed to be so that you can complete the attack. Or all of a sudden, his knife is coming at you like your buddy's knife never came at you uh, because you were trying to do your technique. And that's the big problem. Uh, in the uh, fighting stance we use in this course, uh, we use the one that we feel has the most strength and the least weaknesses. Since a threat may be in any one of uh, four basic stances, we're going to look at the four different. We're going to look at four different attacks that will address each stance's strengths and weaknesses. Uh, when we attack, we like to take advantage of the weaknesses of a stance while avoiding its strengths. And again, in this section, we're going to look at some of the specific attacks that will allow us to take advantage of the position the threat may be in. Uh, again, the attacks uh, are going to be similar to the zone defense counterattacks, and each attack may be modified to serve